Zen in the art of hotkeys in Ableton Live. Here we go. So today we're gonna discuss my 10 or 15 favorite hotkeys that I use in my daily workflow. These are all super practical and they save me a lot of time from mousing around, if you know what I mean. All right, so let's get going. So number one, the letter M turns on and off our computer MIDI keyboard. So if you look up in my top right hand corner, when I hit the M, it turns it on. So what that allows us to do is play MIDI instruments with our computer keyboard. So let me select this pad and Ableton Live, it auto arms a MIDI track when you select it. So now I can just type in some letters and I'm getting harmonic information. How cool is that? So letters A through L are my natural letters starting on C, natural music letters starting on C, C, D. And then W and E are sharps and flats, as are T, Y, and U. And O. So I can do individual melodies, I can do chords, I can use sharps and flats to do things like minor chords, so on and so forth. I can play drums as well, so let's go over and try to play a drum. Ooh, so it doesn't look like it's working right now, which brings us to hotkey number two, which is when you have computer MIDI keyboard selected via the letter M, you can use the letter Z to move down in octaves and the letter X to move up. So if you look here, I'm trying to play some drums, but I'm in the wrong octave. So if I press Z, now I'm in the right octave. Great, if I had hit Z too many times, I'd be too low and I'd have to hit X to bring me back to the right octave. That also works with harmonic information. So here's a C chord. That's too low, that's in the bass range. Let's put it up two octaves by hitting X twice. There we go. Should make a note that Z and X become something different when we turn our computer MIDI keyboard off. Allow me to demonstrate. I'm going to turn it off. I'm going to go over to arrangement view and play this clip. If I press Z now, it zooms in on this clip. And if I press X, it unzooms it. Number three, the letter A will turn on and off automation in a range review. So I've got this little beat here. Press letter A. Now we can actually see all of my automation. Another reason why this helps is, see look past this eight bar loop got a little bit of straggling information. I wanna get rid of that, right? So I'm gonna select it to the bar line and hit delete. It doesn't work, it's actually affecting my automation. So I'm gonna undo that. I need to get out of automation view so that I can delete that. So I've seen a lot of producers have a ton of tracks and they have automation view up and it is so chaotic to look at. So just the letter A will turn it on and off. It's also this button over here in the top right corner but I find just toggling A back and forth is the most time effective. Number four, the number zero on your keyboard turns on and off whatever you have selected. So let's look at some examples here. I have this clip selected, zero disables this clip. So even if I try to play it, I'll get nothing. Zero will also mute or unmute a track. It'll also work with devices. If I select this device, it'll turn on and off the device. Super handy for a lot of things. One of my favorite ways to use this is to create arrangements. So I have a duplicate scene happening three times. So I can just go through and mute out different parts to create an arrangement. <laughs> Number five, we're actually getting two things that are related. So Command E 
splits the clip. So I'm gonna select half of this drum brake, Command D, see how it split the clips, right? Now we're not done. The second half of this is Command J, consolidates that clip. So now it's its own clip that is no longer connected to the second one. You can do that with both audio and MIDI. So I can take these chords, I can split it, and then I can consolidate it. And now it's gone from a four bar clip to a two bar clip. Command E to split the clip, Command J to consolidate it or crop it, same idea. Number six, Command G allows you to group devices or tracks. Let's do both of them. So I'm going to shift select three different tracks right here. Command G, now they're in their own group. So I could EQ them as a group. I could put drum bus on all three of these things. I could throw an auto filter on all three of these things because they are now grouped. Great, now let's do it to some devices. So down here on my synth track, I shift select the first and the last one, Command G, and now it's its own instrument rack. Command G, group tracks or devices. Number seven, Command F, it's a global find in our browser. And it even opens up your browser for you if it's closed, here we go. Command F, now I can search up anything. If I want wavetable, I'm already halfway there. This can save you tons of time if you're looking for particular presets or maybe even third-party plugins so you don't have to go into multiple folders and dig around. Number eight, Command Option P. All your plugins will disappear or reappear. This is my guitar chain. What a mess if I had to unclick it and re-click it every time I wanted to see it. I can simply hit Command Option P and they go away. I should also note that inside Preferences, which you can access via Command Comma, under your Plugins tab, there is a multiple plugins window that you want to have enabled so that you can see more than one plugin at a time to really get the most mileage out of this. Number nine, Command K and Command M, turn on your keyboard and MIDI mapping menus. What does that do? Let's start with Command K. Now anything that is highlighted as orange can be mapped to something on my computer keyboard. So for example, track seven, I could map the activator to number seven. So now number seven turns that on and off. So anything that you see highlighted in your tracks or in your devices can be mapped. Super useful. And Command M opens up the MIDI mapping menu, which allows us to map to certain MIDI devices. So now I can map this to a fader on my keyboard. And there it is, moving my fader. Last but not least, number 10. Plus and minus will expand or compress the view of our devices. Let me show you what I mean. Down here we have three devices in a row. If I hit minus on each one of them when they're selected, it minimizes them. And the equal or plus sign bring them back up to full size. That's really useful in bigger chains like this where I have multiple devices can simply select on the group itself and minimize with the minus key. Bonus round, a couple of honorable mentions. The tab key allows us to go back and forth between arrangement view and session view. Shift tab allows us to go back and forth down below between device view and clip view. In arrangement mode, the letter W allows us to see the width of our arrangement and H allows us to see the exact height of our arrangement. The letter R will reverse audio clips. If we hold down the letter F, it'll show us fades on our audio clips. And the letter S will solo a track that we have selected. Personal favorite for harmonic information, Command A will select all, and the shift down arrow or the shift up arrow We'll move all our notes by an octave. 
Let's listen to the difference. Let's move it down an octave. How about one more? Huge time saver. Command D allows us to duplicate. So if I want to duplicate a clip, it'll duplicate it into the next scene. If I want to duplicate a scene, it'll create a brand new one that's a duplicate of the scene that I had selected. Lastly, two honorable mentions that I feel are very unused are Option Command B opens and closes our browser, and Option Command L opens and closes our lower view, which is shared between device and clip view.